Well, you asked for it, and I certainly owe it to you. Um, time for a brew day update on the Smart PID controller and uh, brew father and uh, the Smart PID brew father integration. Um, so let's take a look at that, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Eaton works. Just first, a quick note about what this isn't. This isn't a step-by-step -step setup video. It's not a how-to video. I'm just walking through my process for Brew Day and highlighting some of the features about using the Smart PID controller in the Robo Brew system, specifically the Robo Brew 65 leader system, and uh, how how a Brew Day uh, goes through. I'll hit a few key points. Um, for using it and uh, some considerations for those of you that are thinking about taking the leap, uh, just trying to fill in that hole, that missing piece of information that I don't see anywhere out there and uh, meet the um, requests that I've seen in the comments on my previous video. So hopefully that helps. All right, here we are in Brewfather. So we're gonna take a look at a recipe that I just brewed with my brother-in-law on a brew day uh, just the other day. And uh, I'm gonna talk through how we use the Smart BID integration. Uh, we're gonna probably flex on a couple other things I have integrated and uh, see if maybe you want me to talk more about those in a future video. But uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at, what do we call it? The Mex I Can't International Pale Lager. So we're gonna double click on this this recipe okay so um we've got the recipe and what i want you to see is that um first thing you'll want to do when you set up a recipe is make sure you choose the appropriate equipment so of course i've got this in my brusilla uh, rubber brew 65 liter um and so it's set up for a six six gallon batch in that particular uh, vessel but when you get your um smart pid controller what you need to do is set up your mash profile and the way that you do that in order for the the integration to actually work with Brewfather is you are going to do your um, mash steps from the template so there's actually if you go into the profile here and we'll wait for this all right so you can actually choose this mash steps template um, as your uh, starting profile and then what you do is you go through and you modify your temperatures and you can modify uh, the ramp time and the time in each of them. And basically, uh, the way the Brew Father system works is it looks at each of these steps. And if it's at zero, it just passes right through it. And uh, so what happened is um, when I sent this to Brew Father, it brought it up to 95 and asked for the grain, put the grain in and ramped right up to our temp. And I kind of like doing that because we're working through some of these other steps on our way. Get to 149, it clocks out 16 minutes. And then from there, it goes to your uh, mash out. Um, in this particular profile, we get to uh, 167, we mash out for 10 minutes. Um, you could change this to 170 if you're used to using that, 168, whatever that is uh, for you. And uh, then it, as soon as it's ready here, it'll ask if it's ready for boil. Um, if you've got the grains extracted essentially, and it'll, uh, step right on into, into the boil and, um, through the boil, it automatically will, um, alert you in the app, um, that it's ready for each of your hop additions. So, uh, integration works pretty well, but it will not work at all. If you don't use this mash steps template, um, from Brewfather to create your mash steps, um, build this, take this template in, make your modification. Quick side note, that's not 100% accurate. I just ran a brew day yesterday uh, before I uh, completed editing this video where I used a much simpler mash profile with just two steps, uh, the mash in temp and the ramp up for mash out. Now, this is an old standing recipe that I imported and I may have actually taken the template, changed its name and removed the unnecessary steps, but it did go to the RoboBrew um, Smart PID uh, controller, and it ran just fine. So just take note that there may be some workarounds, but the documentation says use the template. I say use the template, uh, that way it works.
applications. And then when you go to actually run a batch, and I'll do this on screen here, and it would work from this screen. Obviously, when I'm brewing, I prefer to use my um, uh, my cell phone. It's right there in my hand. I've got all my calculators, all my recipes, and Brewfather uh, are there. The Brewfather app works great on Android. I can't speak to you about iOS, uh, but I'm sure it works great there too. So uh, what we do is um, we go ahead and we create a batch uh, so we can set this Mexicant, uh, Mexicant, by the way, that that's from a movie. It's a clone of a Mexican lager. So that's why I chose that. Um, what we've got here is, of course, it says I don't have these items in stock. But if we went to brewing and wanted to actually send this message to the brew controller, which is unplugged right now, so I shouldn't be able to burn anything out, I can actually select my smart PID. And from here, I can actually tell it to send the recipe and then I can manually start it or I can start the recipe automatically. Uh, I can start the recipe automatically and start the pump. I usually leave the pump off and then toggle that uh, from the app um, and send that. And I'm gonna show a video from um, my brew day and it'll show me actually sending this recipe off and getting it started and you'll see, uh, see that right now. So what I'm doing here is using the app on my cell phone to go ahead and start the smart PID. I have the run mode highlighted um, uh, from the main menu. I don't think it has to be there. I know it can't be in the uh, run mode all the way. Um, I was having some hard times getting this started because I had various devices already hooked up to my cell phone on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for filming purposes. I had to disconnect those uh, and then it went right to work. So you can see it's automatically ramping up to 95 from the ambient temp and it showed up on screen. Here's a section of time lapse to set up some issues I had with temperature precision on the PID loop. It actually dialed in pretty well after an initial swing, but just wanted you to see it. So we've overshot by uh, six degrees at this point. So my PID control, I went ahead and turned off the 2000 watt loop um, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and run the pump a little hotter and or a little higher and stir it to try and bring those temps down. But, you know, even though this has been tuned, um, I'm still having issues with the PID controller keeping it in the exact zone. Now, that's at the bottom. That's where the sensor is. So, realistically, the temps are pretty close to what they need to be internally, but it still bothers you when you see that swing when you've got a PID controller. So it does seem like it's stabilized. So it swung widely at first, and now it seems to be staying within a couple of degrees tops of the uh, of the mark. So doing a good job. You'll probably see it on that camera right there and uh, the time lapse that I'm gonna be uh, attaching. So there you go. Just a little more time lapse as we ramp up through mash out and off to the boil. Well, this is pretty much how most of my brew day went, just kind of monitoring things from the cell phone. Here I am showing you, but doing a good job of making sure the glare uh, keeps you from seeing how things are going. But the app just lets me uh, monitor and uh, tells me what to do, so it's pretty easy. Kevin, in the background, is really struggling with an IPA recipe, though, and this is just a, a, a opportunity to think about some of the difficulties from the Robo Brew system itself. So his uh, little detent spring that allows the um, the the center tube in the stack um, to uh, kind of catch uh, wasn't installed right. Uh, he had the tube come loose, and so he had to unstick his mash and um, had to deal with that tube coming loose and reinserting it. So he had some problems. We, we fixed it. Um, nothing uh, couldn't get un -effed up here, but uh, it, was, it was a challenge for a while, and he had to mess with it. Um, it is his first all grain batch in the robo brew he did an extract before so the learning curve is there but you know the robo brew is a brew in a bag system with a very complicated bag it's stainless steel it's uh, quite a few parts and um it's not perfect and you have to get used to it there is a learning curve but it does work really well and i don't like having cloth in my brew setup um that basically is just plastic made into a fabric and i don't like brewing in plastic i don't think it's good for us um, so, you know, there's my two cents. Um, but the smart PID, PID upgrade is definitely um, an upgrade, and it gives you more control, um, more repeatability, um, more uh, ability to uh, do what your documentation says and uh, gets you a brew that um, you've got control over. And that's really what we're all after. And uh, this is a lot less than a big rim system, so it gets us there for a lot less.
All right, just a final chapter update. Um, brought the temp down to 50 degrees uh, by uh, about midnight and went ahead and threw the pitch in. Got a tilt hydrometer in there, yellow. Got my repeater display slash temp control unit here. Just doing the repeater job. I like to be able to walk by the beer and see what it's doing temperature wise. And uh, actually have the thermocouple stuffed with the Loop 2 coil off of the glycol chiller, self-built out of an air conditioner. And yeah, you know, part of this is what do you want to know about? Um, would you like to see the inner workings of that glycol chiller and uh, see how that's built? Um, want to know about my tilt hydrometer repeater slash temp control unit that I built and the JavaScript code that goes with it? Um, want to know how this beer tastes when it comes out in a few weeks? Well, probably three or four weeks. Anyhow. Um, we'll see, uh, see what you guys think in the comments. There you go. Well, I hope that was informative. Um, wanted to cover some of the basics and hopefully I covered a lot of them. If, uh, you have questions, I missed something, let me know in the comments. I'll try and get back to you either, uh, by responding or, uh, maybe a video. Um, let me know what you want to see more of. If you want to see some information about uh, some of the things you saw in this video, if you're interested in um, any of the things I do with music, guitar amplifiers, guitar builds, um, quadcopters, I've been doing that uh, a lot lately. Uh, I've built a CNC machine to build frames on, et cetera. Anyhow, what, uh, you know, what do you want to hear more from? Um, what other holes can we fill in on this internet? Um, let me know. I'll try and get to making some content. It is summertime for me. I'm a teacher. You'll see a little bit more from me this summer. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye.